beyond the arc. That can be a, an Achilles heel for Texas if they don't get out and pressure Doss. He'll have a teammate that'll go along with him in green. Texas will have to get after them early and not let them get confidence like they did at TCU. Dylan Mitchell wins the opening tip into the hands of Tyrese Hunter. Hunter looked human in the loss against Illinois. Going through some cramping issues in the second half in overtime. He was not able to take over that game. Allen was the leading scorer. Dylan Mitchell doing what we've seen him do all season long here in Austin. He plays so well and is incredibly effective in that dunker spot near the baseline. Got to pick him up if you're the opponent because he can finish as well as anyone in the country. Opening three, connecting from outside is Chris Green, second leading scorer for this Arkansas Pine Bluff squad. We have some Cleveland State transfer. Green scores at multiple levels, especially at that size. That's where this team can be dangerous, out beyond the arc. You've got to pick Ian Doss up. Allen coming off a 21-point performance. The Sioux was trying to go back door. Could not connect. Here's Carr, who struggled from the field in that loss. Allen is open from the Big 12 logo and drops it down. He started the season slowly, but now Allen's coming off. Yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle for him to find his spot. I think Illinois has given him the confidence, that game, if you will, given him the confidence now to build off of that 21-point performance. Also, when you look at Arkansas Pine Bluff and the way that they play defense, they, they kind of play a hybrid, a, a little bit of a man and a little bit of a zone. And Texas did a great job in that last possession just being patient and picking their spots because it can be a difficult load to identify where to score because of the switching between man and zone, or seemingly switching between man and zone, I should say. And Coach Beer pointed out yesterday also switching in between different zone looks in one possession says it is a very unorthodox defensive look. Hunter back out to Carr. Carr unleashes from three. That's too short. Carr, nine points on three of 14 shooting against Illinois. Layup no good. Ishmael Plett fights for the rebound, keeps it alive. And here is Doss to pull up against Carr. Beautiful stroke there from Sean Doss Jr., the grab from Marion, Arkansas. Yeah, from Marion, Arkansas. And how about the way he went right to his spot, two dribbles and pulled up. Something that a lot of young guys struggle to do. Texas knows how good that Doss is. They'll have to find someone to pressure him on the perimeter, particularly when he catches it early. He is a score, to say the least. Nice bounce pass, Dylan Mitchell off the feed for Marcus Paul. A little bit of groundhog day on the other side of the rim. Especially late clock situations. Mitchell is great to have as a guy who can finish around the basket. Carr goes down off the screen, sets up a wide open three-pointer for Kylan Milton, and Milton drops it. We've got a Arkansas Pine Bluff lead, albeit early. It's not rare. Arkansas Pine Bluff, they led TCU by a large margin after the first half there. Hunter for three. On the morning from outside, Texas takes the lead back. Hunter's done such a great job of sustaining his three-point shooting. First, you thought... Maybe, and then now he's proven that the improvement is legitimate. And Arkansas Pine Bluff on the foul on Dylan Mitchell. Here's the outside shot, knocked down by Kylan Milton. Milton, the young fellow, sophomore coming on. You, Milton goes under the screen. Hunter is becoming again sustainably dangerous from beyond the arc, so you can't cheat. Lay off of him when he's got to be on the arc. And as Doss drives on shirt, Mari Rice, the second bucket. We saw the impact that Hunter has on this Texas team. With him not able to really be a factor down the stretch against Illinois, this team missed him. And that's been his calling card is down the stretch. He's a lead kind of guy. He's comfortable making the right play and taking big shots, particularly Good late. Defense there by Doss. Force the air of pass and it leads to a turnover.
it's Arkansas Pine Bluff basketball. Lance, what are you seeing the Golden Lions doing to be able to get this lead early? I see it in their eyes. They're unafraid. Did you see that last possession with Doss? He literally ran up through the chest of Rice and finished that. Thought it was a good no call. They're not intimidated by this environment. They are going to try to compete with these Texas Longhorns. And usually games like this, for the team that doesn't have the talent level as Texas, is that is good defense by Allen. The force the air ball by Doss. You can usually tell within the first four moments how it's going to go. Suffocating defense, other offenses unable to start anything as Bishop knocks that one down. But right now, Golden Lions, they seem poised. They are poised, and Coach Bozeman here is exerting a lot of energy on the sideline, particularly on the defensive end. Great ball movement. Zach Reinhardt, freshman, no. Offensive rebound by Brown Harris. Sets up Milton, and Milton again from outside. And Pine Bluff takes the lead back. You know, one of the best times for the dagger is right after the offensive rebound. Off the fingertips of Christian Bishop. Texas turnover. And Arkansas Pine Bluff with the early 13-11 lead, but still got some fireworks, Lynn. You do have fireworks, and you also part of college basketball part of the initiative here at ESPN and in the garden against high level competition another opportunity for Texas to stay undefeated they fall to Illinois in overtime Timmy Allen the leader for Texas but Matthew Meyer from Austin Westlake transfer from Baylor five three pointers and that is a 10 second violation Arkansas Pine Bluff not the way they wanted to start coming out of the timeout but a good start for Solomon Bozeman and the squad nonetheless Chris Beard wanted to completely take away the three-point shot from the Golden Lions they are three of four so far outside yeah it's a good goal to have but a difficult one because they move the ball so well they play unselfishly nice find inside Rice to Carr going to set up two shots. Yeah, good basket uh, and pass, but again, they move the ball so well and also penetrate into the teeth of the defense, which allows them opportunities on the perimeter. And there is Coach Bozeman, 34 years old, played his college hoops in South Florida and Arkansas Little Rock. And he is building up the talent on this roster. A part of it was getting Sean Doss back. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Doss played his first three seasons at Pine Bluff, then transferred to Southern Illinois Edwardsville for one season before returning this year for his final year with the Golden Lions. Well, that speaks to the college environment now. Oh, yeah. Often about what have you done for me lately and or trying to keep your own people or get them back and so no surprise but great job coach bozeman getting Doss back this Doss is a guy that coach beard told his team could play and score in the big 12. reinhardt the freshman throws it away and that's going to be a backboard violation texas defense started to crank up the intensity yeah and they they crank up the intensity first with the press you saw that ended with the 10 second count and so now, what is the counter for Arkansas Pine Bluff? How do they penetrate and or break down the pressure that Texas is starting to apply on the defensive end of the floor? And speaking of cranking up the pressure, Brock Cunningham checks into the game. Had a really good performance in that loss against Illinois. So he does such a great job with Texas really getting them all for possessions and being a disruptor. Ontario Morris too strong. Rebound by Harris. Morris was also impressive off the bench against the Illini. As Harris gets past Cunningham, cannot finish, and Morris with the rebound. Boy, he, Harris did a great job, not only that rebound, but just running the floor. Unfortunate result there. That's going to be a travel on Morris. Morris has one of those probably every game where he gets a little ahead of himself. He's got to catch it, pass, shoot, or dribble, but get those feet set. Gets a little ahead of himself. A little bit of a freshman mistake that he needs to get corrected. Oh, a deep three here. Rattles home. Chris Green connects. For the second time from outside. Green is so strong. It's almost
almost like a layup. He, he has to put no oomph into that shot. Got to pick him up as soon as he comes into the front court. See the ball movement here by Texas. Staff felt like it stuck too much, especially down the stretch against Illinois. They want to see better ball movement while still taking open shots, which is the challenge. Right, cut ahead. Next down the three. Oh, uh, we're going with the stash look as well. <laughs> we're also going with the patience. I thought Hunter was going to possibly try to exploit Platt on that, but he opted to move the back ball. A little Euro step to finish. No, as Green working on Cunningham again. Here comes Hunter. Hesitation. Mid range is short. We're tied off at 16. Arkansas Pine Bluff, 3-7 and seven on the year. Coming off a win against Arkansas Baptist. They've been close in some top-tier teams. TCU, season opener, one-point loss. On the round against OU and Nebraska. Another one. And that was the heat check there from Green. Yeah, and the defense fell asleep a little bit. You've got to guard him when he's oh. under the ball. Good ball movement. Cunningham finishes. Got to get the hockey assist there to Rice. Set that one up through Tyrese Hunter. The well executed fast break or somewhat of a slow that isn't there and certainly that was there on the rice pass and of course the nice finish there at the rim but i tell you what lowell i'm very impressed with arkansas pine bluffs controlling of the pace handling the pressure and not giving up any offensive rebounds a place that texas likes to excel and handled that press well, right there. Yep. This is the go-to guy. Floor is wide open for him to go one-on-one here. Gets Allen. Little turnaround. Too much. Nice looking shot though. Sean Doss Jr. Cunningham back to Rice. Rice open three. That's it. Sir, Jafari. Rice. Where the Houston point guard for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Here, the young fella. He's the young fella who missed the final shot against TCU there that would have clinched the win. They end up losing by one point. Here comes Rashawn Ware. Undersized guard from. Land and do complain quick as a hiccup, if you will. Show the outside stroke there. Back to Hunter. And chucking threes. How do you feel about Texas? I know it's a constant conversation we have, but in games in which it starts turning into more predominantly the outside shot from both sides, how do you think they ultimately stack up? Well, I think this year they've stacked up well, but you don't want to get caught up in just turning it into a shooting com competition, especially with the personnel you have. And you've got some high flyers around the rim, and you have some other guys who can do things off the dribble. Blair to Doss. Allen with a strong defensive rebound. And you're right on that point, Lance. Texas really has been good on the defensive glass. The suit backs away from the basket. basket and a collision there between Milton and Allen. And that's going to go against Timmy Allen. Good movement of the ball. Look at that spacing there. Where Hunter does not close all the way out. Obviously respecting the foot speed of where. I think he's quick enough to go ahead and close and not get beat off of the bounce wall. Lewis checks in, lets it rip from outside. Allen doing the work on the glass. His third rebound, good find to Mitchell. And it goes through the cylinder of Mitchell. Man, he's doing his work from point blank range and making it look easy. Upside in athleticism. Really impressed with Mitchell yesterday during a hard practice as well. When coaching staff got after everybody, as coaches will do, and Mitchell, this ball gets away from the Golden Lions. 
had the presence of a guy that was third year, fourth year on campus, took the hard coaching well, tried to motivate his teammates as well. He has a maturity about him. He is right now a parasitic player because of his athletic ability, and he doesn't really have a mature offensive game where he can do things in isolation yet. Yeah. He is great at finishing around the rim, running the floor. He can guard multiple positions. He just needs to keep building off of that foundation. But we don't see it too often with the yet, right? Guys understanding, I haven't developed the next part of my game, yep. but I'm going to stick to my bread and butter. Yep. Too often times it seems like guys want to branch out in the course of the game as Dylan DeSue forces his way inside. Here's Doss. Full head of steam going down. Rebound by Plett. DeSue wrestling for it, and it's going to be jump ball. The officials have made it clear they're not giving up any of these bailout potential shoulder in the chest perceived to be charges. You saw one here. Watch Doss going downhill, and then Carr bails out, tries to get the call. There's a no call. I appreciate it, the consistency from the official. Allen trying to take it away from Doss. And this is what Pine Bluff is known for. Physical drives like this. A finish by Chris Green. So the outside shot has been prevalent early, but they're really a downhill team. Allen, no good. Also a, a, a one miss and rebound team in this first half. Still controlling those defensive boards well. Not giving up a lot of offensive rebounds to Texas. Milton, pass car. DeSue goes down. And an and one opportunity. Thought it was the right call. How about Milton? You talk about him being a downhill team. This is downhill, but he just kind of slides right to the side. Also think that DeSue himself, he helped watch him kind of open up there a little bit. I don't blame him. <laughs> when you look yeah. at Milton and the way he is built, I wouldn't want that right or left knee to go where it looked like it was going, which was in the midsection. Past couple of possessions, though, we've seen the aggressive nature of Pine Bluff really start to come out. Well, now you're seeing it strategically. They've switched up now and extended into a little token pressure, run some clock, and force Texas to start their offense later in the shot clock. Bishop on the logo. Ten on the shot clock. Back to Bishop. Making the moves. The lefty. Pretty touch there by Christian Bishop. Over Flett. Well, write it in. Anytime Texas is patient with this defense, Arkansas Pine Bluff throws at them. They typically get a good shot and execute. And congratulations to Christian Bishop, now a 1,000-point score after that bucket. Green lost the handle. Arterio Morris, he's got Longhorns running with him. And we start this one. Allen to Mitchell, reset, do it again, same result. A little bit of secondary break action, but also the quick movement of the ball. That ball was popping like a popcorn machine, not only because of who he is, but his ability to catch and finish, which is a high-level skill set that people love at that next level. And you mentioned the skill set's going to grow. But what he's showing right now, even if it is limited, he's really good at it. Absolutely. Yeah, and you make the point well. I mean, there's only so many LeBrons and Hardens and, you know, great players. Not that all the players in the NBA are great, but you're often playing a role. And that is a, certainly a needed role. Uh, a backboard violation off the fingertips of Green. And the game will evolve. But I think there's something to say for a young guy that understands who he is right now. I think that also is a skill set. I mean, know, yeah. knowing what your envelope looks like and when you're getting outside of it. And he certainly seems to embrace who he is and what he can do as a basketball player, which not all players like to do, to your point. Some exciting freshmen on the court for Texas now. Mitchell and Morris Allen inside. Tough angle there. Green holds his ground. Well, I think the officials are just doing a tremendous job in this game. The calls they're not making. Milton for three. Oh, 
Williams over the rim. Five up now, five and ten from outside. Bishop, yes, six points for Christian Bishop. Now 1,002 in his career. Well, and Texas continues the trend of getting baskets in the paint. See if Coach Bozeman, next possession, defensively throws something different at Texas. Too many easy looks. Well, let's see if Goss can get something going for Pine Bluff, as this has been more of the Chris Green show. Green now has 10 points. Milton has 9 points. And after a good start, Doss has been quiet. Morris with the rebuttal. You know, I, I, I got an analogy for you. Green is like a slot, a slot back in the NFL. He has such bandwidth to go and be and do whatever he wants on the floor. He's an incredible guard, and he plays naturally as well in terms of letting the game come to him. Second turnover, however, right off his fingertips. And Texas now has its largest lead at 34-26. And surprise, he was in the dunker spot in that particular possession. The one before, he had it out on the on the wing. He's gassed too right now. Yes, he is. He's having to carry the offensive load. He's such a critical part. But look for Doss to get involved. Texas with the depth coming at you in waves. More limited rotation here for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Bishop from outside feeling good. Morris in the offensive rebound. Had some electric offensive rebounds against Illinois up in the corner. I mean, the dude can jump. And Watson, corner three. Bishop fights for the rebound and gets it. Well, I think that's a little bit of the wear and tear you're talking about in the Bishop inside! Had a way to collect himself and finish. Bishop having himself a half. Well, you, you saw a guy that was a little more conditioned, that being Bishop, and a guy that is worn down to a little bit of nothing right now. Green is incredibly gassed. You saw it on the offensive rebound, and then the miss pressure with the easy layup by Bishop. 11 to 2 runs for the Longhorns. Here's Doss. Mitchell making it tough on him to find room. Green gives it up to Reinhardt. Good ball movement here. Back to Doss. Right before the shot clock expired. No good. Here's Carr. Double team. Mitchell. Mid-range game. Still developing. Carr in trouble. Morris. Another three. A little too much. But Bishop keeps it alive. Texas dominating on the offensive glass. And Mitchell is fouled by Green. And that is a team that is showing some conditioning and showing a willingness to clean up those missed shots. Well, uh, I think the conditioning is right at the top of that list. That you, I, I'm looking at the faces of guys, guys like Harris and Gas. You got three guys tugging on their shorts right now. Yeah, and Bluff. sometimes the tug is just, that's how you stand at the free throw line. And there are other times when you are literally physically gassed. And right now I'm seeing yeah, that. Yeah, these guys look gassed. That and uh, foul was on Doss, by the way. As Green and Harris go to the bench. Well, then the numbers are proving that out. Also, you mentioned it, giving up the offensive rebounds, which wasn't the case until recently. First 15 minutes. And there's another near offensive rebound at, at Cunningham. After, as soon as that free throw attempt did not go through the cylinder, Rock was on it. And typically, when fatigue hits, execution diminishes pretty quickly. And Pine Bluff just needs to get out of this possession. Hunter. And a Beckway in trouble, almost walked with it. Good hands by Dawes. Rice got him with the shot fake. Four on the shot clock. BB pass inside to Bishop and gets it off and draws the foul when Bishop had no business even getting a shot off right there. Well, you thought he was boxed up, but right now 
They're just using the energy. The in shapeist or most in shapeist is that a word? Can you say that phrase? I know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Guys, you ever meet? He is a great guy and strong as a bull and healthy and just uh, has a great vibe and spirit about him. So always bringing that positive energy. That's uh, a great way to describe him, Lance. As Bishop hits the first free throw, so one half of work, 9.7 rebounds. So you're talking about season-high numbers now for points and rebounds for Christian Bishop. And we still got 343 left in the first half. You're suppressed by Texas and Beckway and Hunter with the on-ball pressure and a timeout by my block. But this is a critical juncture of the game for Pine Bluff. I mean, they're down 12. They got to figure this out. Give some credit to the program because his energy level, look at that. That late in the half has really shown itself to pay big dividends. He's put himself in a great position not only to score but also show how well conditioned he is as this game has begun to wear on Arkansas Pine Bluff. So that's a shout out to John Riley, the man in charge of if this Texas team in shape. There's a turnover after the foul from Rice. And I believe we did not have the shot clock. Reset. Let's see what we got here. And you got to believe that it's in the scouting report to not fall for the Rice ball oh, fake. The, the nation point, has yeah, to know it. At this point. And <laughs> you still get guys bouncing around the court. Why he's is so, that? He's literally that good. That's... Ooh. The definition of excellence. Good hands by Cunningham. Repost. Back out to Cunningham. That's a ball movement. That's a ball movement Chris Beard was looking for. You got to finish. And Cunningham does. How about the selflessness and the presence of mind? Literally, they just sat there and played catch. There was no one within seven, eight feet of Cunningham. And that's a travel on play. Texas basketball with 301 left for the half. You got the nice crossover and then look, I'll give it right back to you. No one's gonna rotate to me. Bam. So how tough is that balance when your coach is telling you we need more ball movement? The ball cannot stick, but don't pass up open shots. Well, it's just, it's it's a skill set. It's just knowing the art and science of the game. For some for some guys who have the blinders on and only want to score, it's difficult. But for a guy like Rice and this group that's on the, on the floor, basically, if you don't have a clean look, just pass it to the next guy and move the ball to the defensive ship. Easier said from here. Hey, no, I, I know it was not an issue for you, though, passing up the open shots. No, not at all. Of course just not. I want to win. your career numbers and goodness yeah, gracious. I, I appreciate the shout-out, but, yeah, I'm trying to win ball games, man. That's the most important hey, thing. And, and you got to put it through the cylinder to do that, right? That's exactly right. Or give it to your teammates to do it. So Robert Lewis was called for the foul. Ice cannot convert. Really nice play again by Bishop, though, to lead to that foul. And that is a charge. Tyrese Hunter putting the body on the line with Kylan Milton with the full head of steam. Yeah, and he got set just outside the restricted arc. You see it there as Milton had committed himself getting all the way to the basket. And, and you see the way he was dancing with him before he yeah, set his exactly. feet? Exactly. He's trying to get him to playing the game of chicken. That's right. To make him pick that ball up, which is exactly what he did. And he says that he wants to be the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Those are plays that will help make that happen. Up the hands of Cunningham. State with Texas with 2.27 left to play. Here in the first half, 41-26 lead by the ball. Yeah, and, and I like guys having those type of goals where you want to get an award, but sometimes that can be subjective. Focus for Hunter should be on being the best defender that he can be. And then allow that award to be a part of that or a result of his great defense. Bishop. Holy ball there against Chris Green. And Christian Bishop now with 12 points. I would argue 
that Hunter means more for the Texas offense than the Texas defense. I would agree with you. Little touch. Back out to Morris. And that, uh, did that ever happen to you? Which one of those? <laughs> I mean, there was a lot that just occurred there. The half pass shot that broke. The <laughs> like, I don't. I really want to know statistically what happens with the thing that Hunter put up there. Was that a? Was that a? I don't know what that was. <laughs> and then the shot off the side of the. I mean, there's a lot. We got to talk about that at the break now. Oh, you got me rolling, man. Yeah, well, that's what happens oh. when, you, when you log a lot of miles together. You get a lot of shots. Where putting it up, that's going to be a goal tip. And, and so what you saw there on that oh, possession with Morris into where, that is exactly why Hunter gave him a little bit of space earlier because of his size and ability to get by people with the ball. He is very quick off the bounce, so... You've got to space him properly, which isn't easy with his level of quickness. Cunningham open for three, and Cunningham with the new career high in points. 11, Wait three for three from outside. Wait a minute. Cunningham's it's the mustache. A, he's a three-point shooter now. Oh, yeah. and literally in a matter of one game. Green, little runner in a good response there by Chris Green. Well, some newfound energy after spending a little time on the bench. That was a very good shot. Hunter, excellent stutter. Back to Cunningham, showing the moves. Great ball move. And that's going to be a charge against Bishop. In fact, the elbow. Got into Chris Green, but Brock, it's the George, it's the mustache, the combination of both. They love it. Well, and it's Bishop also. You notice most of these shots, Bishop is in the area. That time he had two defenders kind of hemmed up where they couldn't get a clean closeout. So as well as Cunningham is playing, he might own, oh, Bishop, a little bit of a lunch or something. After the performance that he's had in helping him score. Player on the suit. Size mismatch, but the suit can move. Hunter got a piece of it, and it's gonna stay with the gold lines here. Eight seconds on the shot clock, 20 seconds before the half. Sean Doss Jr. has been quiet. Only four points for the man who's averaging about 18 a game as Cunningham goes to the bench. You got to stay attached to Green. He's the wild card here. Curry outside missed everything. Ten seconds before that. Hunter. Skipping through traffic, high off the glass. Morris will try to heave, not in time. And Texas will go to the break with a 46 to 30 lead. Heim Bluff will stick it around for Christian Bishop, Brock Cunningham, the inside outside combo. And Cunningham has a career high in points, 11 off the bench. He's done a great job with some two man game action playing off of each other. Interesting to see how they build on that here in this second half. And does Arkansas Pine Bluff show some renewed energy after they got that break? They started the game off so hot, had an early lead multiple times as the first half went on, just ran out of gas. Just not enough timeouts to allow them to recuperate. What was the most impressive thing you saw from Texas in the first half? Patience. Seeing it here early. They didn't get discombobulated with this unique defensive scheme Arkansas Pine Bluff likes to run. Late shot clock. Carr looking for it. Step back. 
and got it with Marcus Carr with his first field goal after the afternoon. And that's also a key element to great teams where you have guys who can finish late in the clock. Carr and Hunter, Texas has that. Tough shot for Green. He was a leading scorer. The goal of the Lions with 12 points in the first half. Who hits the deck? Let's go back though to this shot by Marcus Carr. Yeah, and as I was talking about the patience, there's really nothing here, but you see the, that sequence. So this is what they were looking at, and it is the foul from Plett. So he pulls down to Sue, looked at it to see if it was a flagrant, did not get word, but that was a review was over. You see a common foul nonetheless. It's short by the Sioux, and there's Clint with the rebound. There's some maturity there by Allen. That... What a finish by Kylan Milton. These guys from Pine Bluff, they're tough. Carr, three. Carr got three. Yeah, and resilient. I, I mentioned maturity by Allen because. You saw him running over people earlier in the season. He's now comfortable trying to help and make plays for others. So I think it's contributing to the better play we're seeing over the last two games. Nice. Setting up Tyrese Hunter, case in point. Yeah, it's all cue. I mean, he's essentially like a third point guard with this lineup here. Of course, you got Hunter and Carr, and then he's at third ball handler who's incredibly dangerous and finding the shot now coach beard told the team yesterday practice this in hindsight probably should have gone back to Allen Moore down the stretch against Illinois he was sensational in that game with 21 points there's Carr falling back cannot get the roll rebound by Green yeah, it's such a luxury to have an Allen who can get the rebound and essentially start the offense from the backcourt. You don't need to initiate offense to someone on the wing because he can do it from the top. Doss on Allen, and that's going to be an offensive foul as Allen is able to draw that against Doss, and it's been a struggle for Doss. Well, Doss has got it in his mind, as you see Allen make the great pass. Dawes has it in his mind. He's going to get into that paint. The defense obviously picking that up, namely Allen. Getting in position to take the charge. Texas forcing 18.3 turnovers per game. That is 18th national. Part of the bread and butter. To Sue, there was contact, but no foul. As Milton went down. And that goes against DeSue. Number two on Dylan DeSue. So game slowing down a bit here in the early goings of the second half. Two points, two fouls for DeSue. He's been quiet. It was honestly quiet against Illinois. Just played nine minutes in that game. One point. Did not record a rebound. And that's where DeSue can help this Texas team probably the most on the glass. I thought both teams that game struggled. Pablo Keep it. Really turned into the team that had the ability to execute best down the stretch. Might be obvious looking back, but during the game it was playing out that way as well. And had who could get hot last, right? It was Meyer early. And then Shannon late. Carr to Mitchell. Contact. Mitchell's going to the line. Great unselfish play there by Carr, knowing that he had the hot flyer in Mitchell right behind him. And this is good awareness here. As Carr, you see, he saw him glance over his shoulder. You got Carr and Mitchell. I'm like, I agree with Carr. I'm choosing Mitchell for that finish. So let's go back to that game against Illinois. Right, a game like this, Texas is doing what it's supposed to do. At a five-point lead, under a minute to play. What can you take away from the way they lost that game against Illinois? 
And does it present bigger picture problems for the long ones? Well, because uh, ultimately, those are the teams you're trying to beat in March. That's true. And you need closing. You need closers. You talked about Hunter a moment ago. Well, that's going to be a key as you get into March or even if you get into conference play. Guys need to be healthy on the floor, willing to step up and close out those kind of games. I'd be shocked if that's the last close to overtime or overtime game for Texas going forward. Yeah, so we're talking about March and it's only December. We have a lot of time to play for this Texas team to continue their approved org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. Lance, this is a program that has been impacted by cancer. The story of Andrew Jones, everything he went through to work his way back. Win the battle against cancer. Get back on the court, become a factor for the Longhorns. We wish him the best and in his endeavors playing professionally. And for Timmy Allen, who lost his mom in the battle against cancer. That's something that, that stays with you forever. And this is a Texas team that knows all about how important patch kids came out and you couldn't find them anywhere. Parents were like fighting each other to get these cabbage patch kids. It was <laughs> it was all nuts. That was back in 1983. You mentioned 1983. Where, where were you back then? You I was in Houston. Oh, so was I in Houston. I was three years old. Oh, my God. Three yeah. years old? Three years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, those Houston teams were incredible back then, as is this team. They have an arsenal of good players, and in Alabama, of course, freshman and Griffin will be a battle to watch. The caliber of players on that Houston team was just unmatched. Hard foul on Timmy Allen. Hold his left arm a little bit. Those players got in. Those, those guys back then, I mean, that was <laughs> by far has to be arguably the best college team in the history of college basketball to not win a national title. Well, especially when you consider what that talent did in the NBA as well. It wasn't just players that were college. really good on the college That's level. That's fair. I mean, you're talking about names like Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler and Michael Young. So many. Benny Anders. Such a good team and a great coach in Guy B. Lewis. Reinhardt McCurry got it. And that is the freshman Zach Reinhardt from Orlando on their top three point shooters. His first bucket of the afternoon. A little life. The time block with 15 minutes left to play. Double team on Allen as soon as he touched it. That's a turnover. Here comes Ware. Bounce pass to Doss and Doss. Finally get the bucket his first of the second half. Only his third of the game. Uh, a little bit of a cap bounce, if you will. This team continuing to try to apply some pressure to Texas. The super three. I don't see that a lot. Stroke looked good. Just would not go down. Ware got in trouble and was trying to set it up for Chris Green, but that's the turnover. Interesting to see how Texas handles this part of the game because with the timeouts, it's slowed down a little bit. Well, they fell falling asleep a little bit at the wheel, as you mentioned, the three ball miss, and then of course, or the miss defensive assignment. And then of course, Ware putting pressure on the defense with the one man fast break and pass to Doss for the easy layup. Rice lost the handle, got it back. Couple dribbles. Morris, did I get it? Well, it's Harris has a rebound. What does Pine Bluff need to do to find some momentum? Maybe that. Oh, he almost did it. Chris Green almost had his moment here in Austin, Texas. Well, the most obvious, obviously, is score the ball, but they've got to string a number of defensive stops. And as Texas 
Kind of two, just lost the handle. Yeah. Really attacked the iron. The obvious obviously beyond off scoring the ball and moving it and getting them to their spots, making threes. Texas has been able to pretty much get whatever they wanted on the offensive end of the floor. So if Arkansas Pine Bluff can string together some stops, I think that's what will fuel their offense. They're looking at the leading score in the game. Grains of 13, now 14 points for Arkansas Pine Bluff out of the swap. Seven, nothing run for the Golden Lions after that timeout. Barr gets it over the top line. Control on the point with Hunter on the bench. Morris almost walked. Cunningham's got a career high in points. Directing traffic. Says Morris, you come this way, get the open shot. Rock Cunningham set that one up for Ontario Morris, who knocked it down. I mean, Morris is the guy for Texas, really, that might have the most potential. You just got to realize it with the level of consistency and what he brings. Staying with Trey John Ware right there. Yeah, we could look back on Morris at the end of the season and say he's improved the most through the course of the year. Yeah. It could be a difference come tournament time. Yeah, and he should do that because he's being afforded the minutes in the reps to get better. Contested shot, Bishop, another offensive rebound. Oh, 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 there by Harris. 39. Pop off 59 for the long one. Where a little one-on-one, -on -one, undersized. Quick. Poor decision there into the hands of Morris. Rice lobbing into Cunningham. And that is up the hands of Pop Bluff. So it will stay with the long As Hunter will check back into the game. Texas did a great job there defensively staying with their particular man and giving no outlet for where to pass that ball. She tried to break down a much bigger Bishop with the mismatch. 17 assists for the Longhorns, just six turnovers. There's Rice, took too much, Cunningham, trying to go up and under. Got his own miss. Nice fake. Hunter, the finish. Tyrese Hunter set that one up for himself. And then, over the baseline, goes Robert Lewis. Well, so of, right back to Texas. And speaking of Hunter, sorry for stepping on you, partner, but he made the basket, fell, and was able to get up and deny. He's key. Great job here. We missed it there, but the denial is what created the. And there's Milton takes it away. Milton taking off. Milton flushing it. And Kylan Milton, now with 13 points. Turnover. Leading to the run out. Cunningham off the dribble. Back to Cunningham. Just so good patience on that shot by Brock Cunningham. Yeah, and just no rim protection. So an easy finish, to your point. Smart to be patient. Not going to be that easy in Big 12 play, huh? No. no. A little extension there by Ware. Hunter gets it. Talk about guys who can play quick. Hunter can, but he has such good pace to his game. Bishop. Yeah, he's such a great athlete, particularly with his size. Not the biggest down the floor. Corner three rolls out. Hunter almost got great sleeping in transition. Hunter seven points, two assists. Couple of turnovers. Reinhardt goes down. Bishop and and Reinhardt, put it down over. Reinhardt tried to draw that charge, but the officials have really proved out this whole game that they're not going to give those essentially flops. They're not calling the flops, no, either. This is 
straight up no call. We're seeing guys, we're seeing games we've called get a tee up for the flop. And particularly the offensive flop where guys will fall back. Yeah. It's been a point of emphasis, but none of that today. I like it. Let him play, right? That's right. Rise, such patience, setting himself up. Into the hands of Curry, and here comes Hanblum. Makes it on Morris. Morris hanging with him. Both side is cleared beyond the high screen. Step back three, Milton. Too much. Curry the rebound. And that is off the mark by Curry. 541, 928 left. Run away. Reinhardt for three. For the second time, no. And Texas, you're going to see in the middle of your screen at the top there, getting ready for a hockey line change. You got five fresh bodies getting ready to enter the game. And to see those blue long horns is Chris Beard calls a timeout with 904 left. All Texas here, 65 41, 904 remaining. Falling into the trap of getting into a shooting contest from beyond the arc. And we see five new faces out there for the Longhorns Carr, Allen, Masur, and Amekwes. And Dylan Mitchell returns. Allen will let us in. Takes it all the way to the finish. Oh, and true to form, another paint basket. Allen's got four points. Little fade away too much. Not that me. Come down for a moment. Here's Carr. Good job keeping the dribble. And that's an offensive foul against Santa Mecca. That is Milton who drew it. So what is Chris Beard, in your estimation, looking for in the final 824? Looks like Texas is going to win this game. But what is he monitoring? Well, one, you want to be on win the game, obviously, win these next eight minutes or so. And two, you want to keep your guys in a good rhythm and good form and, and continue to bounce back from what happened in Illinois. Talked about it earlier, finishing games. Nice hands by Carr. Sets up another flush by Milton. Mitchell is just going off. He knows his game. It's right around the rim. We got no problem with that. No, we don't. He's the right guy to have it around the rim. But you want to develop also low good habits. And regardless of the fact that you have a big lead and you're finishing a game versus an overtime game you're trying to finish. Sue affected that shot. It's into the hands of Curry. The, the rules remain the same. And so you've got to do it on both ends of the floor. And we're seeing that with some great... Most of his highlights since the day would be dunks. <laughs> so basically, his shot chart is like if you took a Sharpie marker <laughs> on a piece of paper and just let that ink bleed. Yeah. That's it right there. Right under the bucket. Put a block right on the rim. I think it's only been one shot that hasn't been either a layup or a dunk. The mid-range jumper and missed yep. that one. Remember. That's right. I think that was by the elbow. Everything else, though, with authority from inside. It's Allen going baseline with eyes up to Carr. Five on the shot clock. Carr will take it. He's just setting up Mitchell. And Adam Mugway. Brilliant pass. Does that count as an assist? Does that add to the, the season high 18 assists now for the Longhorns? And Allen has done such a great job today of not forcing anything early in the season. Oh, got into this 
forcing basketball. He's just done great today. Running the lane, staying out of the way, and being a facilitator. Yeah, this is the Timmy Allen that we're used to seeing. Yep. Not the guy that can get it in the air as Carr hits that one. And as you said, he does so many things well. You can point out some of the things he doesn't do. He doesn't have vision tops, right? But playing the game of basketball, understanding it, making everybody better, checks all the boxes. Yeah, he's a very cerebral basketball player, and he wasn't that early in the season. He was a he was a bowling ball rolling over people like they were pins. I thought some of that was created by Hunter and Carr playing their roles because him he finding had, his spot. Correct. He had to find his opportunity within that, but he seems to have done whatever he needed to do. I'm sure he's watched plenty of film and figured it out. Step back, no good by Green. Here's Allen looking for somebody. I think Chris Beard is going to go back, watch the film as Anna Mekwe lets it go from three and say, that's how you make an impact off the bench. But more importantly, be pleased with the way the ball has moved today. Yeah, and the recipient there, Anna Mekwe, with the nice three ball. He's also one of those athletic guys who comes off the bench for Texas. And a team guy. Yeah, doesn't get a ton of minutes, but he is very good. An athletic player. Speaking of athletic players, Dylan Mitchell. Dylan can pretty much get anything he wants today along the baseline. Number four recruit coming into the season. Highest ranked Texas recruit since Mo Bamba. And he's having an early impact like Bamba. Dunk you very much. Yeah, instead of taking it on the same side, he switches sides. A nice little lefty finish. And his work for the moment is done. Perhaps for the afternoon. To the bench with 5-12 left. And a Mekway with a really good spurt there. Five points for him. And Morris re-enters. And we have Gavin Perryman for the first time today. Arkansas Pine Bluff, though, really showed something at the beginning of this game. They came out, hit four of their first five. Looked very efficient offensively from outside. When what they typically do is attack the rim. They had a lead multiple times. Eventually just ran out of gas. It was a patient approach by Texas to just simply wear them down. Yeah, at about the 15-minute mark, that's when I thought the turn happened. The fatigue really just jumped on them, particularly with Green, who was having trouble. Who suits it up, who you're playing against, that they're able to bring it, and you want to be able to do it on a stage versus having to try to emulate it in a practice setting, low. And Coach Beard has talked a lot with these guys about making every game personal. Yep. Pointing out it's easy to get up if you're Christian Bishop and you're facing your former team at Creighton. When Kansas comes to town, it's easy to be ready for those games. But you have to find a way to make a game against Arkansas Pine Bluff, a team that they probably know they should be doing this against. you got to find a way to make it personal so it means more to you. Well, and that's what a pro is. It really doesn't matter who's on the other side, how you feel. You bring a certain level of excellence and execution. And I, I love you bringing that up because that's the exact point that Chris Beard made. That if you are up and down in professional basketball, yep. you're the inconsistent guy and you're done. The moment you're down, yeah, you're, you're gone. You you're not a professional. Shot. Yeah. Exactly. Perryman the kick out five on the shot clock for Rice three defenders there no foul he wanted one will get two though basketball play Sir Jabari Rice under recruited out of Houston had a really nice career in New Mexico State and wrapping it up back in his home state these Texas Longhorns that was no good from Robert Lewis to suit 
So the Sioux has a serious size edge against Ware right now. They recognize that. Go back to Dylan the Sioux. That was unfair. There's no way 5'9 is hanging around with 6'9 Dylan the Sioux. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier what the keys to this ball game. I thought that was one of the keys too. Just the patience. You saw it with Ware, Ware getting exploited there. Trying to defend a much bigger front court player for Texas and that just takes time and identifying where the spots are in the defense to get an easy basket. Now the patience but being willing to jump on an opportunity immediately as it arises like this. Morris with the open shot. I'm sure the coaching staff is going to be fine with that. Yeah. But particularly with who it is. And that's a nice transition bucket there by Sean Doss. A guy that dropped 25 points against TCU has eight here today. Under three minutes. Next up for the Longhorns. Rice on Monday, 7 o'clock on LA Chin. As Bishop extends his season high with 16 points and 9 rebounds. So it'll be a short, quick turnaround for the Longhorns. Out on Monday against Rice. Two twenty-seven left to go. Bishop leading the charge with sixteen points. Beard and Longhorns up eighty-four forty-three. And then the fourth one, and then. The nice drive with the Mr. Puff fake for the easy finish. Four passes. I mean, if you could get that in every possession and end it that way as a coach, you'll take it, Lowell. So do teams just need to be reminded on points like that? Because obviously the coaches felt it was sticking a little too much late against Illinois. Well, so I, it's people sometimes. and. Coaches are good about pointing out certain individuals. Some, not everybody wants that ball late, by the way. <laughs> that's real. That's real. And so, and sometimes guys want to be heroes. And so it's striking that balance and making sure that you got guys that are more about making the right play versus the play that's best for them in their particular career or how they want to feel. So we can't go back as Colt Bott gets the rebound. But if Hunter isn't cramping, he's 100% closer to it you feel like that outcome is different there's no question it's different and i don't necessarily mean that texas gets the win it's just you know he's going to have the ball in his hands because obviously texas didn't lose the game one possession i mean they, they lost it pretty clearly but certainly with him on the floor that being hunter it would have been a different different finish to the game either way even if they had still lost there's a finish by rice right before the shot clock expired, 86-43, creeping up to the final minute. But you also don't want to take away from guys like Meyer and what they did. In oh, that yeah. And here's Morris. Authority, the exclamation, the icing on top. You see, and, and now you, you talk oh. about individuals and giving up the ball and not. Now, man, Perryman, I mean. I, I, I'm with I, you. I mean, you could. Come on, Morris. I mean, so, and now you leave them with under a minute left yeah. where you're probably just going to let this clock wind down. It's a good chance of it. They, they needed chance. their moments right when we started resuming action. Yeah, I mean, you got to let your teammate maybe get involved. So, well, I mean, yeah. But, but I'm probably not approaching Arterio Morris and saying, hey, um, when you threw down that dunk, <laughs> I was close. <laughs> you, Maybe you, next time. You're not going to do it, huh? Well, okay. Hey, Texas Volleyball in action at 5 Central, needing a win to go to the Final Four again, taking on Ohio State. Gregory should be, it always is, Yeah, electric. Yeah. Electric, exactly. Well, Texas bounces back from the lone loss of the season against Illinois in New York. 88-43 over Arkansas. Pine Bluff, Mitchell put on a dunk show. What's new? Brock Cunningham comes up with a career high. 13.